Spring Cloud Gateway is nothing but an API gateway which is implemented by Spring for its Spring Cloud Framework. So let us first see what is an API gateway. An API gateway is basically an API management tool or a service which sits between the clients and the microservices or a monolithic application. right? So this API gateway will be a single point of entry for an application. So client will only have to invoke or interact with this API gateway. And the job of this API gateway is to take the client's request and route it to particular microservice or suitable microservices to get the response the client needs. This way API gateway actually provides an abstraction between the microservices architecture or a monolithic application architecture and the clients. So here I have uh, multiple microservices listed here. For example, trip service, payment service, map service and bunch of other microservices are there. And all of these microservices are sitting behind an API gateway. So the client which will be interacting with this application will not be interacting individually with trip service or payment service or map service for example. They will only interact with an API gateway and it's API gateway job to decide which microservices needs to be invoked to return the particular response the client needs. So let's say for example I am the client and I want to access for example let's say this is an Uber kind of application a car or taxi hailing application and I want to know what is the payment I need to pay for the last trip I took. So I will go ahead and uh, open my application whether it's a mobile application or web application that will be a request which will go to the API gateway and as soon as I go and uh, ask for a payment for my last trip a request will get triggered to an API gateway. Now API gateway will match that particular request to uh, related uh, microservices that which services that request needs to go to then once it finalizes that okay this request needs to go to the trip service it will go and invoke the trip service API. Now trip service will go and see okay for this particular trip what will be the payment of that uh, trip so it will go and it will invoke internally the payment service and it will get the response back and similarly it will return back the response to the API gateway so it will return back the response to the client right similarly client 2 will come and they want to know uh, what is the status of driver which they uh, for the cab they have booked so they will go ahead and they will uh, invoke the API gateway API gateway will t in turn invoke the driver management API to fetch the response and give it to the client 2. So this is how API gateway sits between the client and the microservices or monolithic application and it provides a kind of an abstraction or interface between these two worlds right the outside world which is the clients and the internal uh, backend system of a microservices architecture or a monolithic application. Now let us see what are the benefits API gateway provides. So there are multiple benefits which API gateway provides so I am just listing down few major important benefits. So API gateway benefits the first point is basically it provides the abstraction between the macro services or the monolithic application and the client right. So client will not have any information about which technology that macro services is built into and what is their locations, what are their IP addresses, what are their each individual URLs. So they, they are not bothered about that and that's why API gateway is there to provide that kind of abstraction. API gateway also provides a single point of entry. It restricts the access for an unauthorized person okay so for example a person who is not logged in who is not a particular authorized user of that application will not get access to in the macro services or the APIs of that uh, particular application because the request will go through an API gateway and API gateway straight away will reject the request if that is not an authenticated or uh, authorized request. So in turn it reduces the potential attacks to an application so that is a major benefit of uh, having an API gateway layer. Then it provides load balancing feature as well, right? So in many a times there can be a surge time or peak time where there are multiple number of requests coming to an application, right? For example, let's say there is an office office timing, right? So the morning and the evening, those, those were the two peak times where multiple employees will be either going to the office or coming back to their home. So for example, let's say Ola or Uber kind of application which are like taxi services. So those will get maximum number of requests in those two peak times. Those many requests and to evenly distribute those requests to the instances or number of instances of those macro services, load balancing feature is needed and API gateway is able to provide that load balancing feature as well. That will make sure that the distribution of the incoming request is weighted across all the instances of all the macro services. Then the next feature which API gateway provides is a rate limiting features. Alright, what is the rate limiting feature? So it will basically limit the number of times an API can be invoked in a particular duration, right? This is the feature which API gateway provides. So suppose, for example, we must have seen multiple uh, free websites, online online services, for example, URL shortening services or uh, text to PDF converter or those kind of services, right? Which gives us a free amount of uh, request. Like for like couple of times, we can go and we can uh, convert. We can convert and it will be free of cost but after a certain number of uh, times we have visited that website they will put a cap on that and they will say that okay from here onwards you need to pay or you need to subscribe to our services to continue. So those kind of limiting feature we can apply to our APIs. So that kind of feature is 
basically provided by API Gateway as well. And Spring Cloud Gateway is also one of those gateways which provides those features. And there are uh, much more features than this. So there are also monitoring feature to see the metrics, how many requests are coming into which service is getting the maximum request and all those uh, features are also available as part of API Gateway. So Spring Cloud Gateway is also nothing but an API Gateway. So how it works basically. So this Gateway client is basically a client, right? It can be a web browser, it can be a mobile application or it can be a third party application. So whenever Spring Cloud Gateway receives a request or uh, an incoming request, what it does is it will pass on that particular request to gateway handler mapping and this gateway handler mapping what it will do it will read that particular request the path of that request and it will match whether that request is being configured in the spring cloud gateway or not if that request matches to the route which is configured inside spring cloud gateway then it will go and fetch the destination uh, url which needs to be invoked right because this will be the single entry point right as a spring as an api gateway so this will know all the locations of microservices, what is the IP address and what is the port number on which that microservices is hosted. So it will go ahead and find those microservices based on the routes which is being mapped by uh, which is being uh, mapped by using gateway handler mapping. Once that is identified that which microservices is needs to be invoked, then it will go ahead and it will look into the filter of those routes, right? So there will be multiple filters which can be configured in Spring Cloud Gateway and those filters are basically so if you want to pre-process the request before sending that particular request to the destin destination microservices, right? So those kind of filter can be run through and once that filter is done, then that request will get proxied and it will go ahead and it will invoke that particular microservice which needs to be invoked. And then it will come back again to the gateway web handler if there is any post processing needed before finally making, before making a final response, then those post process will be done in this gateway web handler in those filters which Spring Cloud Gateway provides and then that particular final response will go and it will be returned back to the client. So there are three main components in Spring Cloud Gateway. One is route. Route as the name suggests, it will be an API path. So this will contains the destination URL, the microservice URL basically which we want to invoke. It will also contain a list of filter which can be available for a particular route. Then we have a predicate. Predicate is nothing, it's just like a Java 8 function predicate. So it will basically helps us to match whatever is present in the HTTP request. So HTTP request can have a body, HTTP request can have a header. So uh, we can apply such kind of uh, conditions like to that the header should match this or header should match that. So those things can be done in predicate. Then filter is basically Spring Framework provides a gateway filter. Okay, and that filter basically helps us in uh, pre-process or post-process of request and responses. Okay, so in a nutshell, Spring Cloud Gateway is basically an API gateway and it has multiple layers. One is a gateway handler mapping, which will find out which request it needs to get mapped to. Now let us see what we will build today. So first we will implement an API gateway, right? We will have uh, two services. One will be our uh, services, which will give a list of countries. Another will be a service, which will give a list of books. So those two services will be running in a different port number and different uh, as a different Spring application and we will implement an Spring API gateway, which will route our request to those services. Then second, we will implement a circuit breaker in case one of the services is down though. And then in that scenario, we need to have a circuit breaker in place so that a default response needs to be returned right to the client. And third, we will implement a rate limiting feature. Okay. Now let's go into the ID and see uh, how we can achieve these three. So I'm in Spring Initializer and I have given my name of the application. I have selected Gradle project Java 2.4.3 and Java 8. The dependency which we will need for uh, creating our uh, Spring Cloud Gateway application is just one dependency which will be our gateway dependency. Right. So this provides a simple but effective way to route APIs and this is a Spring Cloud routing. So we'll do this and we will hit generate. So I've already generated and imported this application into my ID and uh, here it is. So as you can see, if I open build.gradle, so we have a dependency, which is uh, spring cloud starter gateway dependency, right? And nothing else. So these are like Lombok, which we will not need in this particular example. So this will be our API gateway uh, application, which will receive all the requests from the client and it will route to two different uh, microservices, which I already have created. So let me just open those two microservices. So those are one is books. Okay. And the other one is countries. So it just has uh, one or two API and it is reading it from this JSON file and it is running the response back. Okay. So I'll give the link of these two uh, application in my GitHub repository. So let me go to the second one, which is the books API. 
and it also has uh, one JSON file and that JSON file will get converted and it will get, get returned back as a part of response to these uh, APIs right at all or at all slash delete so we will see what all these APIs are so let me go back to spring cloud gateway so the first thing which we need to do here is we need to configure our routes so how spring will know that uh, how this application will know that which application or which microservices uh, it needs to route to those requests to okay so let me create one config package okay and this package will hold our uh, class let's say let, let me name that class as uh, just a gateway okay gateway config okay so this will be our configuration class for a spring cloud gateway so let me annotate it with the configuration now what we need to do is we need to create a, a route locator so whatever uh, whatever routes we want to configure in our spring cloud gateway those routes we need to mention in this particular configuration so what i'll do i'll do a public route locator okay let me give it a name as uh, my routes and this will take input as uh, route locator builder sorry route locator builder route locator builder okay so this will be a bean okay so this will be returned route locator builder dot routes dot build okay so between routes and build we need to map our route so we will give as route and the first route which we will have is uh, let me go and see what is the api so we have our countries api let me open that so we have our country as countries api which is uh, the path of which is slash v1 slash country slash capitals okay let me go ahead and configure this route in our spring gateway so this is our uh, dot route and inside this we will create our uh, path okay so as you can see here p dot path so inside this path we will be giving our uh, path of that particular api which we want to invoke so let me give as v1 slash country slash capitals okay now this is the path so this is the path spring will spring cloud gateway will look into it will try to match this path okay whatever we will send as part of the get request it will try to get and it will try to match with this and then it will try to look into this destination url which we will provide as http localhost and we will be running that application into 8081 port number okay so we have configured our first route which the path of which is uh, v1 slash country slash capitals and the destination url which to which this request will get routed to is localhost colon 8081 okay so these two configuration we have done so let me just save this and uh, let me first start that countries services so as you can see the port number in which it is running is 8081 okay let it get started okay it has started now so let me invoke that or basically i'll try to invoke it from here only so localhost 8081 then we have v1 country slash capitals okay so this is giving us the response of list of countries and the capital of them so this is the api this is the country's api right so we are directly invoking that but we don't want to invoke that we want to invoke through an api gateway so what we'll now do is we'll go to api gateway and we will restart this particular application so let me just go ahead and see what is the port number configured so port number is 8080 so this application or gateway application is running in 8080 okay here as you can see we have this route predicate factory list of route predicate factories which has been loaded and the application has started on 8080 so let me go back to the browser and do a localhost 8080 and what is the url v1 slash country slash capitals it says not found okay let us go and see why it is showing that and the reason is we have missed the initial uh, v1 i mean slash okay now it has started so let me go ahead and uh, refresh this so as you can see we are invoking localhost 8080 so this is going through our api gateway and it is going to hit 8081 this particular api and it is returning back the response so our api gateway is 
setup and it is working as expected so let us add one or two more uh, api in it or route in it so let me just copy this okay so there is one more api in um, countries capitals and that will be a post line okay and uh, let me also configure for uh, the books api so for that our uh, api path is books slash all and this application will be running in 8082 okay let me restart this gateway okay as you can see right now we have three route so one is for this country slash capitals api the other one is for country slash coastline api and the third one is books slash all api so the first two api is basically running in 8081 port number and the second api or the last api is running in 8082 port number let me restart that books application as well okay so the books application is up let me see spring cloud gateway is also up now if i invoke capitals it will return me the capitals then if i change it to coastline it will return me the coastline of those countries right so this second api is also getting mapped it is working properly now let me change it to the third one so this will be books slash all and it is giving me the list of books so all of these apis i am invoking into 8080 which is our api gateway and this api gateway is taking care of matching these uh, route to the actual route of those application which is running in 8081 and 8082 port number okay so this is the basic api gateway configuration which we can do with spring cloud gateway so obviously there are multiple uh, configuration which can do we can apply filters uh, after this path and we can do pre-processing of the request suppose you want to add some request header into the request we can add it suppose you want to add some cookies into the request we can add it or we can or we want to modify something into the request we can do that as very well and also before returning back the response to the client we can also apply a filter here to do a post processing let's say we are getting a response back uh, or we want to append something in the, into the response then we want to do that in this particular filter so those are gateway filter which is provided by spring cloud gateway okay so apart from uh, this uh, java way of doing it we can also configure uh, we can also make this configuration or write this configuration in uh, application.yaml file okay so that that is uh, given in the spring documentation i'll provide the link in the description so basically i like the java way of configuration so i have uh, shown you in the java way of configuration so this is the part where we have configured our api gateway right now let us see how we can implement a circuit breaker in case we have uh, an API which is not responding in a specified time and it will fall back to a default URL. So let us take this particular API which is the all delayed API. Let me invoke that API once. So this is all slash delayed. So this will uh, make the thread to sleep for five seconds and then it will return back the response. Okay. Now to implement our circuit breaker, there are two there are two kind of circuit breakers Spring provides. The first one is Hystrix, which is well known. That is a Netflix uh, uh, provided uh, uh, circuit breaker. And that circuit breaker is now in maintenance mode. So basically Spring will not gonna provide support uh, uh, in future. So that's why Spring has come up with a new circuit breaker, which is Resilience 4J. And we will go ahead with that particular circuit breaker. And we will go ahead uh, and add the dependency for that circuit breaker in our build or gradle file. So the dependency is uh, org spring framework cloud spring cloud starter circuit breaker reactor and resilience 4j okay so let me just uh, download this dependency i think the dependency has been downloaded so now i have mentioned earlier while discussing spring cloud gateway that uh, apart from this uh, route and filter we have uh, route and predicate we have one more important thing which is filter right so that is a gateway filter so spring provides multiple gateway filters through which we can do a pre-processing or post-processing of routes so basically here what we'll do, what we'll do is basically we want to invoke uh, this API and this uh, API. But if that API is not available, we want to fall back to our default URL instead of giving a 4, 4 500 gateway timeout exception to client. So we will add a filter. So filters, then f dot uh, circuit breaker, then this will take a consumer in. So c dot, we will set the name of the circuit breaker as any name. Let me name it as for a drive cb okay so circuit breaker and then we have to provide a fallback url so let me provide a fallback url as slash default default fallback let's say okay so this will be our fallback url once the api is not reachable 
to provide the default implementation of circuit breaker we will provide a customizer bin of reactive resilience for the circuit breaker factory so we will create a public customizer which is coming from uh, spring framework cloud which is coming from spring framework cloud client dot circuit breaker okay then uh, reactive resilience for the circuit breaker factory and we will make it as default customizer cool now what we'll do we'll annotate it with bean then we have to return a factory factory dot we'll configure the default uh, configuration basically so default will be what will be the id so id will be new so this will be new resilience builder of id dot circuit breaker config and inside this config we will mention circuit breaker dot config dot default of defaults so this one right and in here let me just uh, do this bit okay so after that we have to provide the time limit configure time limit or configuration right so what will the time limit so we want let's say for example we want a duration of two seconds so beyond two seconds if any request takes so that will get uh, the request will get routed to circuit breaker okay so in time limiter configuration what we'll do we'll create a time limit config so time limiter config okay then uh, dot custom dot timeout duration and this duration let's say we will take as duration dot of seconds and we want two seconds okay so let me just segregate this yeah. okay so this bean we have created now let us restart this application now let me go back here and we have to invoke this api one two so after two seconds it waited and uh, it has thrown us a white label error page and that is the reason because we have not even provided this fallback URL. Okay. So it is trying to go to this fallback URL, but there is no URL present. So what we'll do now is we will uh, create a controller. Uh, let's say we'll name it as gateway controller. Okay. And we will name it as uh, rest. Rest controller. And uh, let me give it as public string default default message and uh, we will return there was some error in connecting please try again later okay we will return this and the mapping we will be giving is uh, sorry this one okay let me restart the server okay so now let me invoke this one two three so as you can see there was some error in connecting please try again later so it tried and after two seconds when it is not getting back the response it is reverting back to the fallback url so if i remove the delayed from here it will go to the normal ui url and it will return back and if i again uh, mention delayed it will fall back to the same url all right, now we will see how we can actually configure a rate limiting uh, feature in uh, Spring Cloud Gateway. And we will apply that particular uh, rate limiting feature in uh, any of the APIs, right? So for that particular purpose, we will be using uh, Redis rate limiter. So Redis will be taking care of uh, keeping into account, keeping out tracking how many requests has been hit and uh, what in what duration. So those uh, count on those rate limiting count will be done by Redis. So for that, we will have, uh, we will want to have a Redis server up and running. Right, so the ready servers uh, which we'll be using here, I'll not show how to install and how to start a server. So basically you can go and check out uh, my other API of Spring Boot with Redis and there I have explained how Redis, what is Redis and uh, how we can actually configure and install Redis and run that Redis server. So I'll go back and I'll just start the Redis server which I already have. So let me go back. Okay. 
okay so i will just go and start the ready server right so now the ready server has been started and it is uh, running on the port number 6379 and it is running in uh, local host okay so the next thing which we want to do is we want to provide the port number of redis right so redis then uh, the host so the host will be basically local host and then we want to provide the port so port will be 6379 right so this is the redis configuration and uh, we have to add one dependency which will take care of uh, making the connection with the redis service which is running locally and which we have provided the information for so this is the uh, so this is the dependency spring uh, boot starter data redis reactive so let me just uh, refresh the dependency all right so this will take care of uh, making connection to ready server and uh, sending all the details which is required to keep a track of number of requests which has been invoked okay so now let us go ahead and uh, do the configuration for our rate limiting so what i'll do i'll go and do the configuration in here in for the api which is slash uh, books slash all okay so again we have to add a filters then f f dot f dot here we'll have a request rate limiter dot configure and inside configure we want to provide the consumer function to c dot set rate limiter and this rate limiter we want to set here is redis rate limiter right so for that purpose what we'll do we will create a bean which will return us a redis rate limiter public uh, redis rate limiter redis rate limiter so return new redis rate limiter and this will take in two parameters the first one will be your default replenish rate and the second one will be your capacity okay so we'll enter these two thing and we will return back so i'll tell you what these two are let me first add this okay right so now we have added our redis rate limiter so apart from this we also have to add one more thing which is known as key resolver okay so key resolver and we will name it as let's say a user key resolver okay and return uh, return exchange and then mono dot just mono dot just just and we will give it as one and this also we will provide it as a bean okay now let me just restart the application okay now the application has restarted right so before that um, uh, let me just uh, tell you guys what is these two right default reference rate and default burst capacity so this replenish rate is basically the property which says how many requests per second a, a, you want a user to be allowed to do. So for this particular API for which we are implementing this rate limiter, in one second how many requests you want to be allowed, okay, without any drop request. So 10 is the number of requests which is allowed in one second, right? Then what is the default burst capacity? So default default burst capacity is the property which says the maximum number of requests a user is allowed to do in a single second, okay? So in a single second, what is the maximum number of requests a user can uh, do? Okay. So this capacity is in one second, how many requests a user can do, which is 20. And this is replenish rate is basically in one second, how many requests you want a user to do without any dropped request. So out of 10, all of the 10 requests will go. So that is the replenish rate and this is the burst capacity. So the next thing is key resolver. So key resolver, as the name suggests, so Redis uh, rate limiting will only work if the key is present. If the key is not present, the request will be denied. So for the sole purpose of uh, allowing that request, we are just mentioning a bean of key resolver, which returns one as the key always. So now, uh, since we have added our rate limiting, okay, and our Redis service is also up, let me go back to the postman. Let me go back here and uh, the 
API which we added is this one, right? So let me just copy this, go to Postman here and we invoke this. And in the headers, if you see, we have this X rate limiting remaining 19, X rate limiting requested tokens, which is and burst capacity is 20. So burst capacity is 20, which we have uh, configured and the replenish rate is 10, which we have configured. So we have invoked one. So this 20 minus one is 19. So if we again invoke again, it be, becomes 19, 19, 19. Since the burst capacity is 20, right? In one second, we can make 20 requests. So that's why we are not seeing any difference here. So let me just go back and uh, decrease this. Let me just decrease this to one and the capacity to let's say two. Okay. And restart the server. So now what will happen? The user can only invoke two requests per second, right? If the user is invoking more than two requests per, per second, then after two, after two requests, the third request will uh, not be executed and it will throw that too many request error basically. So let it start and see. Okay. It has started and now let me invoke this API. Yeah, it has worked. So the capacity is two and replenish rate is one. So if I again invoke one, two, two, me invoke multiple times yeah so as you can see in between we are getting for 29 too many requests so whenever the request is uh, getting more than two times in one second there we are getting four to nine too many requests so here the rate limiting feature is coming to picture so uh, redis is taking redis is keeping track of uh, the number of requests which is invoked in one second and as soon as it reaches or it reaches beyond the capacity it will just throw an error saying four to nine too many requests and it will not go to uh, the particular uh, api so this is how uh, we can implement our API gateway. We can implement our circuit breaker and we can implement our uh, rate limiting feature with the spring cloud gateway. So if you have any doubt, just put your comments in the comment section and I'll, I'll be happy to uh, clear your doubts out till then happy coding.